It is a well-known historical fact that prior to Columbus discovering a populated continent, everyone in the ancient world thought the Earth was flat. But after he slammed his boat into all those poor filthy natives, it was proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Earth is a perfect sphere. But what if he was wrong? What if all those totally real ancient scientists were right? What if all those morons who circumnavigated the globe were lying to us because they were in the pocket of Big Map? That's right, Rand McNally, I'm calling you out. But wait, you may say, if the Earth isn't round, doesn't that violate all known laws of gravity? Oh, don't even come at me with that gravamyth stuff. When was the last time you actually saw gravity? Have you licked gravity recently? No, you haven't because it's bollocks and I can prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt with a simple at-home experiment. Alright, so if gravity is so bloody powerful that it can keep the moon spinning around us, then how do you explain this? Did you... Did you see how long that took to fall to the ground? If gravity is so powerful that it can keep the moon flying around up above us, then why does it take so long for the baseball to hit the ground? What, is gravity so weak all of a sudden that it takes mere seconds for that ball to get to the ground? It should slam right in! Oh, I don't even need the baseball. Watch this. Yeah, see? That's me! Weak, pathetic human me fighting the force of gravity! Yeah! Yeah! I can do this all day, Gravity! Yeah! You ain't got nothing, punk! I'll punch your grandmother! But that's not all. A bunch of fellow flatheads have stood on the top of really tall things and taken pictures of a minute fraction of the Earth's surface with a good view of the horizon, and if you look at it, it looks flat! What more proof could you possibly need to upset the entire scientific basis of the modern world? And if you need more evidence, I've got some more photos of a minute fraction of the Earth's surface, but from slightly higher this time! Now that my overwhelming and well-researched scientific evidence disproving the Earth's roundness has doubtless convinced you the Earth is flat, I'm sure you're wondering how that actually works. Well, it's a flat disk and Antarctica circles the globe holding in the water, and the disk is supported on the back of a giant turtle- uh, t no wait, that's uh, that's Discworld. It's balanced on pillars and surrounded by a firmament. And I guess it's all accelerating upwards at 9.8 meters per second squared and that's why we fall down. And I'm definitely not worried you'll realize that such an acceleration would have us going the speed of light in less than a year because I assume you're bad at math. But why would the scientific cabal and shadowy UN secret police go to so much trouble to cover up something that doesn't really affect most people's day-to-day -day lives in any real tangible way? I mean, as long as the GPS satellites are still working, then most people couldn't give a $2 blumpkin what shape the Earth actually is. Well, I'll tell you why. It's all about control, man. The Illuminati has controlled this planet for centuries, and they will do anything in their power to keep the population fat, stupid, and distracted. They faked the moon landing, and they knocked down the Twin Towers to distract us from the real problems facing our society, like fluoride in the water supply that has mind control drugs in it and whitens our teeth, commercial airliners that leave chemtrails and help us go on business trips, autism in the vaccines that effectively wiped out smallpox until we caught on and put a stop to that shit. They, a nebulous and scary group of people called they, are everywhere, and we must do everything in our power to rise up and stop them! Protect yourself, my scaly friends, any way you can! So it should go without saying that the Earth is actually round, and no, most ancient civilizations didn't think it was flat. Most ancient civilizations were really big into astronomy, and it turns out measuring star locations at different points on the Earth is one of the best ways of determining its roundness. And yet, in spite of how easily disproven the Flat Earth conspiracy is, it has gained a surprising amount of traction on and off YouTube. Dozens of YouTube channels post videos of their thoroughly unscientific tests, and rapper B.O.B. made a whole song about his belief in it. It's so widespread that Shaq made a joke about believing it and had to tell people he was joking. We are past the point where people saying they think the Earth is flat is not something we can assume as a joke. There's an entire cottage industry of science channels debunking the ridiculous claims of flat earthers for entertainment, much like how ten years ago it was big business to be an atheist on YouTube and make videos laughing at creationists. 
Let's just hope this new batch doesn't follow the same career path as the Rationals version 1.0 did. But I'm not really interested in doing a video where I look at specific claims and debunk them with math or wheatgrass or really anything since a bunch of these claims disprove themselves. No, I think a far more valuable use of our time would be to examine the question of why? Why such patently ridiculous ideas gain traction and what makes people believe in the unbelievable? Like most conspiracy theories, it's a combination of cognitive dissonance and a need to feel special. The human brain is much more likely to dismiss evidence that conflicts with its understanding of the world than engage with said evidence. So when you tell a true believer that no, the moon landing wasn't faked, just ask the astronauts, it is easier for them to think of you as dumb or in on it than actually challenge their own beliefs. You may notice this happening in other less stupid debates as well. But conspiracy theories also come with the allure of being the smart one. The rest of the world seems to think that vaccines are healthy, but you know the real truth. And by knowing the real truth, not only are you safer than all those sheeple, but you're also smarter than them. A sense of superiority is a hell of a mental drug and can be quite hard to shake loose from. Basically what I'm saying is that conspiracy believers are that guy who knows exactly what millimeter of film Django Unchained was filmed on and is really goddamn proud of knowing that. These combination of elements mean that there is basically no way to out-logic any conspiracy theory. The white-hot burning core of every conspiracy theory is rejection of facts, so more facts will just bounce off. Sometimes you can make progress with an emotional appeal, but even that's not a magic bullet. No, more important is to inoculate people against being persuaded by conspiracy theories in the first place. Kill them before they have a chance to take root, like weeds. Basically everything in the video from this point on is based on a study called On the Viability of Conspiratorial Beliefs by David Robert Grimes. It's a statistical examination of how long it would take for a conspiracy to fail from its own members breaking silence. I've provided the link here and in the description and I highly recommend you read the study for yourself. It uses a Poisson distribution to model the likelihood of failure over time as a function of the number of conspirators... okay. I know that probably sounded like Elvish, but I've walked through this and the math used is sound. The single most important element is the probability that someone talked, either from their dreaded human consciousness or because they a dumb dumb and opened their big mouth, probably over some beers at the local watering hole, the Golden Fleece, where Philip is always looking for the latest juicy gossip. Nobody likes you, Philip! Anyway, this value needs to be estimated using data from conspiracies that were exposed. Specifically, this study uses the NSA internet monitoring exposed by Snowden, the Tuskegee syphilis experiment where black men with syphilis were observed but when penicillin was shown to treat the disease they weren't given it for some reason, and the revelation in the 90s that the FBI had been using faulty forensic evidence for years. So you plug these numbers in, make reasonable assumptions about breadth of info dissemination, put your left foot in and do the monster mash, and what you get are these three models for how quickly a conspiracy would fail. The first model is under the assumption that the conspiracy members are actively killed off to cover up the misdeed. This is arguably a meta-conspiracy to be hidden as well, but we'll ignore that. This curve is if the conspirators are left alone to die off on their own, and the last curve is for a conspiracy that requires an active presence to conceal. So say for example, Area 51 was hiding aliens on a military base. Well, that's gonna require active military personnel to stop the Scooby Gang from rolling in and accusing old man Witters or whatever. Sure, you could argue that the fence guards haven't heard about E.T., but some of the on-site staff know what's going on. Those people are probably gonna move, get a new job, inherit a haunted English manor. Something is gonna make them move on and need to be replaced. Which just means more and more people have to be told there are aliens just to stop people from finding out there are aliens. The model for such a scenario clearly approaches a limit of one as time progresses, and that behavior is not drastically changed if you only need a couple guards. The report plugs in some potentially high numbers for its examples, but let's actually talk about how this applies to the Flat Earthlings. Once again, I'm gonna give flatheads way more leeway than they actually deserve and work from the position that the Earth is actually flat and the UN is covering it up and basic science is not... real? 
But especially nowadays, the flatness or roundness of the Earth could be easily checked by that old favorite of exploration of just going to see it for yourself. The most commonly presented model for a flat Earth is the Antarctic ice wall model holding in the water. So all we need to do is fly over Antarctica and check whether there is an edge. I ran the numbers and a Cessna TTX can easily get from the tip of South America to Antarctica. Costs are hard to get, but a safe estimate puts it at $800,000. Let's add to that for other stuff and say you could go see Antarctica for about a million dollars. Video games are routinely kickstarted for more money than that. And that's not even going into how much cheaper a boat expedition would be. It would not take a lot of time or effort for a dedicated group to find out that our entire concept of the solar system is a lie. And we would assume that a world governing conspiracy would know that and would set up a barricade to stop people from just hopping over to take a look-see at the new safety fence they put in after Charles died from that stupid wager. A proper barricade of the continent would mean patrol boats, airplanes, radar stations, and more. But that's not all. You need refueling stations, bases for the soldiers, boatyards for making all those battle-ready boats that have somehow escaped international notice. Shocker, but we actually track how many vehicles there are. This is all just to actively patrol what should be international unclaimed territory that is mostly desolate and only of interest to scientists. We're talking over a thousand people just to encircle what my understanding of Antarctica is. That's not even discussing how many more thousands of people it would take to patrol this ridiculous hypothetical flat earth coastline that encircles the whole planet. I can't even be bothered to calculate or look up what the circumference would be because it so obviously would drastically increase the patrol size. So that's several thousand people just to guard what, to the public understanding, should be a useless icy wasteland only of interest to scientists. And I think it's important that right here we deflate a key criticism of most conspiracy theorists that the people guarding it don't know what's going on. You've got several thousand people employed with explicit orders to not let anyone visit what is in the public understanding a generally useless chunk of ice. Those people are going to wonder what the hell they're guarding, even if they don't know that the Earth is flat. They're going to go home at the end of their day and whine to their families or their buddies, because that's what people do when they have a boring, shitty job, and it would almost immediately filter around that there is a massive guard unit stopping anyone from visiting the South Pole. This isn't even accounting for the climatologists, physicists, astronomers, and whatnot who we assume aren't in on the conspiracy, but whose day-to-day -day work relies on the assumptions of a round Earth and would probably notice if those assumptions were giving them numbers that didn't match reality. See, this is the real sticking point of large conspiracies. Either literally millions of people across the globe are in on it, which is unfeasible, or millions of scientists are doing their job wrong every day without even double checking their math, which is literally the first thing some poor intern is going to do the moment anything goes wrong with the computer model. It's astonishing how many people would notice the discrepancies between a flat Earth and a globe Earth once you stop and think about it. Commercial pilots, for example, a generally trustworthy career field. They have to know how to plot a course without computer assistance just in case snakes eat the wiring. There's a big difference in course plotting when you use the flat Earth model and the actual Earth model that would immediately make it impossible to have useful numbers for distance and fuel usage. And the only reason I keep bringing up doing math on paper is to cut off any replies about how the computer is programmed to adjust and give you the readings you expect. None of that shit, please, okay? So a conservative number of people that need to be on the take or objectively shitty at their jobs in order to hide the Earth's flatness is somewhere in the millions. Probably tens of millions. The model from before did a calculation for what it would take to cover up the moon landing. With a little under half a million people in on the soundstage conspiracy, the veil of secrets likely breaks down in just five years. And I think it's important that I point out that this study I've been using does not account for any sort of outside influence. The assumptions it makes are conducive to the conspiracy remaining hidden. It doesn't account for journalists doing investigations, errant hackers stumbling upon something they shouldn't see, or conspiracy theorists running around raising a fuss. It only accounts for people who know speaking up. 
So if anything, these time estimates are too long. The concept of being skeptical of what you were taught in grade school and not just taking it on faith is not a bad one. But that's exactly how the Flat Earthers lead in with their weird conspiracy stuff. They start out with some innocuous but plausible sounding fact, like, why don't you see the horizon curve even when you're high up in an airplane? And then you go, hmm, that does sound odd. You might be onto something. And then they say, well, I've got a lot more evidence that could convince you. You should come check it out in my cabin in the woods. And then you go check out that evidence, and the next thing you know, you're arguing against the existence of volcanoes. Thing that actually happened. As someone who's studied more science than most, science doesn't always make logical sense. Oftentimes, the physical world is as counterintuitive as burning calories in your sleep. But that doesn't matter. Science is about observing, cataloging, and understanding how the world works, not how we think it should work. I'll let you in on a dirty little secret. Planes don't actually fly how cartoons or your science teacher told you. It's actually a lot more complicated than that. And bikes? We don't actually know how those stay upright when you ride them. It could be as simple as you making lots of little balance adjustments and as complicated as conservation of angular momentum, but the point is we don't know and the bike stays upright regardless. Just because you don't understand something doesn't mean you can't rely on it to do its job. I don't understand tax law, but that's what I pay a tax accountant for. This insanely arrogant idea that just because you don't understand how gravity works means it must be a lie is just the absolute pants. Right, well, I think that's just about everything. I think we've pretty well covered that any attempt to disprove the literal foundation of science should be treated with disdain. Now go forth, my inoculated children! Go forth and vaccinate the world! Get out of here, the video's over.